Hello. Hello. Hi, how are you? I'm fine with you. I'm doing well. This Allison. Oh, and hi, Christian. Back. Hello. <laughs> Hi. Allison, where are you from? I'm from Brazil. From Brazil. Very cool. What part of Brazil? Mm, the center. Near to the national capital. Okay, near the capital. Very cool. Um, I would love to go to Brazil for the Olympics. Um, or not for the Olympics, I'm sorry, for the World Cup. And for the Olympics. Aren't the Olympics going to be there too in... Uh, 2016, I think. Me? Maybe. I don't know. I know <laughs> the next World Cup is there, isn't it? Yeah. Hi, is this Leonardo? Hello. How are Hi, you? Hi, Leonardo. I'm doing well. How are you? I'm doing well, too. Fine. Good, good, good. Glad to hear it. And is it Jesse that just joined? What? Jesse? I, I Jesse. think we just had someone Hello. else just join as well. Hi, Hello. Jesse. How are you? Hello, I'm fine. And you? I'm doing well. Thank you. Um, can we go around and do introductions really quick? Like maybe where you're from, um, what you like to do, and something um, like your job. How about your job and something that you like to do for fun? Because um, I think we have a lot of new faces. Um, so I can start. My name is Amelia. I'm originally from San Francisco, California, in the United States. And I go to the university in Washington, D.C. And I'm currently studying abroad in Buenos Aires, Argentina. Um, and I'm a student, obviously. And in my free time, I really like to play soccer. Um, and I also like to, what do I like to do? Um, I like to sing. Yeah. So that's a little bit about me. What about you, Allison? I'm a freshman of engineering. Um, I live in Goiânia, Brazil. Um, I like playing soccer. Um, I like reading books. I like seeing films. Um, just this. <laughs> Cool. No, that's great. Thank you. Um, what about you, Christian? Uh, what would you want me to say? Uh, I wasn't listening. Sorry, uh, I was. No, that's absolutely fine. I just was hoping we could do like introductions really quickly. Um, so if you could just give us your name, where you're from, oh, what okay. you do for a living, and something that you enjoy doing just for fun. Okay, I am from Chile. And um, I work in a call center. And for fun, I, I love to play rock music. Cool. Very nice. Um, what about you, Jesse? Um, so, uh, I am Jesse. I'm from mm -hmm. Brazil. And I, I just graduated. And I, I have actually I I have two jobs. Uh, I work in a public institution here in Brazil, and at the, the at day during okay. the day, and at night uh, I am beginning working as an English teacher. So I oh, am cool. beginning. I'm beginning. Yes, yes. But. Uh, my pronunciation or my speaking is not so good yet, so that's why I'm trying to improve it. Yes. Awesome. Yes, that's awesome. Good. Very cool. Well, since you're a teacher, if you ever have any, uh, if you ever have any suggestions for us uh, with our English or with just learning in general, or for me with teaching, feel free to let me know. I would love to hear any suggestions or thoughts you have. Okay. Um, what about you, Leonardo? Well, I'm Brazilian too. I'm a student of civil engineering. Civil engineering, okay. Civil engineering. And I love to learn languages and make friends of all the world. 
Very cool. Very nice. And uh, so that's your. Do you have like an activity that you like to do specifically, like maybe a sport or uh, something with art or reading or film or anything that you like to do just for fun? I like to watch uh, TV shows. TV shows? Okay, cool. TV shows. Talk to offers. Okay. Play chess. Allison just typed up play chess. Do you guys know? <laughs> did you, do you like to play chess? Do you two know each other already? Allison and Leonardo? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Oh, how do you guys know each other? Oh, okay. Very cool. Wow. Um, so you're both at university together? Yes. And are you studying engineering as well? Was Wait, was that engineering that you said, Allison, or was that Jesse? Could you type? Yeah, absolutely. What what are you studying in the university? Thank you, Christian. <laughs> I try. I try to be quick. A lot of calculus. Oh, so it's math. <laughs> A lot of math stuff. Yeah, that sounds rough. Chemistry. Okay, wow. Drawn? Like drawing? Like art? Okay. Gotcha. Oh, cool. Um, that's awesome. And it looks like we just had Pablo join. Is it Pablo? Hello? What? Oh, no, I was just asking Pablo. I think we have Pablo. Hi, Pablo. How are you? I don't know if Pablo has a microphone or not. He seems frozen right now. Um, very cool. Well, it seems like we have... A lot of South, uh, once again, a lot of people from Latin America, um, and some students, people who like music, and people who like film and TV. Um, so what sort of, what sort of TV shows do you guys, I know, I think it was just Allison and Leonardo who said that their interests are things they like to do in their free time included watching TV or movies. What kind of um, TV shows or movies do you guys watch? Leonardo, I think your mic is off. I think you have to click it on, and it should be like in the top right corner. There's a little thing with a like a microphone sign. Um, so just make sure that's on. Castle. Yeah, that's better. So what, oh, what kind of TV shows do you like to watch, or TV shows or movies? Castle? Oh, Castle. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've heard of that. Um, what about, what about you, Jesse? Any, do you have any TV shows or movies in particular that you like? Oh, yes. Uh, I love the, the Big Bang Theory. Do you know oh, that? Oh. Uh, yeah, I heard that's yeah, really heard popular, that. don't you? Cool, cool. So, Big Bang Theory. What about you, Christian? Yeah, it's it's very nerdy. Um, yeah, I think that's a, it's like a nerdy comedy. Yeah, I haven't seen it, but I've heard it's really, really funny. Um, Christian, what about what? Oh, Pablo. This sh I think we're talking about the show, The Big Bang Theory. Has everyone heard of The Big Bang Theory? More or less, I don't know. Um, it's a TV show. It's an American TV show, actually. Um, but it's become very popular, I think, in South America. Um, and it's about, it's a comedy show. Does everyone know what a comedy show is? Or what comedy means? Yeah? 
No. It just means funny. Comedy is like the it's a certain type of genre. Do you know the word genre? It's it's spelled like this. I just typed it up on the chat, but it's pronounced genre because it's a French word. Um, it just means like a category or type. But it's so usually mostly in reference to books or music or movies. Um, so that's, it just helps us categorize them. Um, Could you repeat the pronunciation? Yeah, the, yeah, yeah, no yeah. problem. The pronunciation, the pronunciation is Jerry? genre. Hold on, I'm just going to mute you, Allison, for a second, because I'm getting a lot of background noise. Sorry. Um, is someone outdoors? Do you, are you guys, like, hearing a bird? I'm hearing a bird. Is that just me? Maybe it's just me. Yeah, <laughs> I think. <laughs> it's not. There it is. Yeah. I have it too. Okay, so I'm not crazy. Okay, <laughs> fine. Um, so, yeah, genre, the pronunciation is genre. Genre. So, everyone, feel free to practice right now, genre. So, it's almost genre. like, like yeah. John, the word John. Ra. It's almost like that. John. Ra. But it's spelled G E N R E. Okay, I got it. Okay, cool. Yeah, it's sort of a tricky one. Pablo typed on this chat. Yeah, so so Big Bang Theory it would be probably considered comedy, but it's also sort of like a nerdy show. But it's the, the genre that it's in is comedy. Um, so Pablo asked. Oh, he just left. But he asked before he left if anyone watched Lost. Does anyone has anyone seen the show Lost? No. No. Yeah. No. I have. No, okay. No. You have? What do you think, Jesse? Oh, it's very strange. <laughs> but uh, I guess that's why it is interesting. Mm. Because it gets your attention and you have to watch every day or every Yeah. Time. Yeah. It's so, considered a, a drama, I would say. But, um, yeah. I used to watch it. I actually watched it for a really long time from when I was 14 to when I was 18. No, from when I was, I must have been younger than that because it was on for six years. Yeah, from when I was 13 to when I was 18. Um, it was, yeah, I really, I loved that show. I used to be really into Loss, uh, but it was kind of crazy. Um, what about you, Christian? Do you have any particular TV shows or movies that you enjoy watching? I was in France for a while. Mm -hmm. Oh wow! Okay. And now I'm watching Castle. Okay, you watch Castles. And Two and a Half Men. Oh, Two and a Half Men. Pretty good one. Funny. Pretty good one. <laughs> and well, I don't remember any other show right now. But. Oh goodness! Um, typing is well. oh, Leonardo's got some got some loud typing. Oh yeah, how I met your mother is also funny. Um, my sister watches that, and she she's a big fan. I I like it. Um, so it seems like everyone's really into the comedy, the comedy genre. I am as well. What about you, Allison? Anything in particular that you enjoy watching? Mm, Simpsons. <laughs> Simpsons, that everyone's always like, Los Simpsons, Los Simpsons. Um, yeah, they're, they're, they're pretty funny. Um, it's really big in the United States. I think it's been on for a, for a pretty long time. Um, do you guys go to the movies very often, or do you typically watch movies in your home, or movies or television in your home? Like, do you go to a cinema often, or movie theater? Hmm... Sometimes. Sometimes, yeah. What was the last movie you no, saw in not the theater? Film. Not, not that often. Mm. It's kind of expensive. No, I, I don't mind. It. You don't. 
I I rather uh, watch the movies at home than going to the cinema. Mm -hmm. How come? Because, because it's you are more ease. No, no, I don't say. Yeah, I don't it's more relaxing. It's more, eh, that's the word. I, I, I'm yeah. more relaxed, and mm -hmm. I connect my my computer to the radio on the TV. Okay. And I get I get a really good sound and and a really good image. I down okay. I download the the movies. Oh, you download them, yeah. We say yeah. we have a little saying that says we say in the comfort of your own home. Just means like when in your in your home you're you're more relaxed, you're more comfortable. Um, so a lot of times people will say it in reference to things like like you just said, like movies. Like I like to watch movies. You could say I like to watch movies in the comfort of my own home. I like to watch movies. Like movies my. in the comfort of my own home. And the comfort of my own home is just a saying, but it's it's translated literally. So it just means yeah. in you know, in the comfort of your own home. Um yeah, no, I agree with that. It's kinda of, it's nice you can just like lay around in your pajamas and watch yeah. a movie. And eat whatever you want in front of the T V, which is always good. Um and yeah, about, it, and yeah. it doesn't so, matter if if it's cold or not. Mhm, mm that's true. It does not matter if it's cold. Um, yeah, sometimes at the movie theater it can get really cold. I remember when I was growing up, my mom always used to make me bring a jacket to the movies um, because I would always get really cold. So you keep it very air conditioned. Um, what about what about you, Allison? Do you prefer watching movies or? Do you go to watch movies in a movie theater often? Can you repeat? Could you repeat? Yes, absolutely. Um, do you go to the movie theater often to watch movies, or do you typically mm -hmm. watch them in your own? I prefer move, uh, movie theater. Movie theater, yeah? Yeah. Why is that? Mm, it's big. The display is bigger than mm -hmm. the TV. The sound quality, sound quality is uh -huh. more efficient. It's better, yeah. It's clear. It's better. Uh, it's clear. Uh, it's better mm -hmm. in some aspects. What was the last movie that you saw at a movie theater? Mm, the Batman. The last. Batman. One. <laughs> yeah. Did did anyone else see Batman, the last Batman movie? I've seen it three times. <laughs> Whoa, I, I've seen it twice. I loved it. I I think that there is um, something to be said about um, watching action movies in a movie theater. I think there are certain types of movies that are better in in a big on a big screen. Yeah. And they're really loud, um, kind of like the Batman <laughs> movies. Uh, yeah, I saw it twice. I, it was the, it's the only movie I've ever seen in theaters more than once. Um, but it was really, really good. I would encourage, if any of you like action movies, I would say you should definitely see see Batman. The, uh, I don't know what it's called. I know in Spanish it's El Caballero de la Noche. And I think it was Dark, The Dark Knight Rises in English, I want to say. I only I saw yes. it here, so I'm not really sure. Yeah, okay, it was Dark Knight Rises, uh, and I don't know what it was in Portuguese. I don't know if you remember, um, but yeah, it was really good. It was fun. Um, what about you, Jesse? Do you prefer movie theaters or watching movies in the comfort of your own home? Um, I prefer I prefer at my home because uh, uh, I like to. Watching movies at my bed, at my yeah. bedroom, at yeah. my bed. It's very nice. <laughs> yeah, it's very relaxing. Yeah. <laughs> That's it is why. very relaxing. And too, because I, I like to watch movies in, in the original language, uh, sometimes mm -hmm. in, in English. And so, okay. in the, if you go to the movies, uh, you can choose the language sometimes. Yeah. yeah. Do you guys watch movies in English or in your native language? Or do you watch, like, do you ever watch movies subtitled? 
I don't like uh, watching movies in Portuguese. It's very oh, okay. difficult. Really? Hmm. I think sometimes it's kind of interesting because here I watch a lot of movies that are in English with Spanish subtitles because um, I'm living in Argentina. Um, and it's kind of interesting because a lot of the time I notice that what they have written in Spanish is not really the translation for what they're saying in English. Yeah, like that's, true. Close. yeah that's true. Yeah, it's close, but it's not really. There's a lot of sayings, just like there's a lot of um, phrases in Spanish that don't translate directly to English. There's a lot of English phrases that don't translate directly to um, to another language. So especially with like comedies, you don't get the same. Yeah, um, but, but that that is strange yeah. because the people that uh, translate these movies is supposed to know the language, and exactly. sometimes sometimes the subtitles doesn't mean the real thing that. The, the actors are trying to say. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, it's really interesting. I think sometimes that's because a lot of times there aren't really translations, literal translations. Um, and I like, like an example that I like to give or I like to think of is that in, um, in uh, Serbia, I want to say, in Serbia, I don't know, maybe it's in Iceland, like in Iceland, in Icelandic, the language, uh, they have like six different words. I'm just pulling a number out of pat, but I know they have a bunch of different words for ice, for different types of ice or snow. Um, and so, but it's the kind of thing where in, in English or maybe in Spanish, I'm not really sure, Portuguese, we only have one or two words for snow and ice. Uh, we don't have different words for like thin ice or um, powdery ice. Um, we just use the, the descriptive adjective because it's not part of our culture. We don't need to use those words because it doesn't snow that much, um, Where at least where I live. Whereas in Iceland, it snows all the time and they, they need different words for different types of snow and ice. Um, so it's interesting, yeah, because like with some of those translations, you lose some of the meaning just because there is no word in the other language for that. Um, but yeah, it's kind of interesting. Um, so you guys typically, if you're watching, do you watch a lot of American films or are there a lot of uh, Chilean and, and Brazilian films that you enjoy? I like American movies. Yeah, what kind of music, what... Uh, What's like the last movie that you saw that you really liked? Uh, yesterday I saw The Expendables too. Oh, The Expendables! I've heard of that. I've yeah, seen pretty, that, I've heard of it. pretty good. And okay. uh, I saw That's My Son. Okay. And a terror movie. I I don't remember the name. Okay. Horror movie. Oh, do you like horror movies? Yeah, I like, I like them. All right. Okay. I'm I am like very frightened of horror movies, but once in a while I like them. Once in a while. Um. What about you, Leonardo? What kind of movies do you like, or do you like to watch movies? Sorry. First of all, do you like to watch movies at home or in theaters more? I prefer to watch movies at my home. Okay. And but uh, some films. Uh, I prefer to watch the movie theater, uh, okay. like The Avengers, for example. The Avengers. The, the oh, high, yeah. I saw that this summer, too. It was really good. Sorry, keep the going. High, the film is too great that uh, I prefer to watch in a high definition and a high quality of sound. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, that's very true. What's what's the last movie that you saw that you enjoyed? I don't remember. Okay. No, that's totally fine. Don't worry about it. Um, I actually just saw, and I usually watch just American films, um, but I just saw last weekend a film called, or last week, it's a film called Infancia Clandestina, um, and like I guess the translation in English would be like secret childhood or clandestine childhood, um, and it was about this this boy during the um, Dirty War in Argentina in the, the 
the 70s and the 80s, end of the 70s, early 80s, and um, him growing up with sort of this double identity. It was really good. I highly recommend it if anyone um, likes drama. It was a good drama, drama um, film. So, yeah. Um, very cool. Well, uh, this class, like, Christian was actually in my last class, so I'm sure he can uh, attest to this. Um, but this class um, is supposed to be a vocabulary class. Um, and I like to do more um, like casual style classes and just because this is really about you guys getting time to practice and hearing English um, and just sort of being able to get, get a little time to speak yourselves. So I usually like to do it um, more informally. Um, so in terms of vocabulary, I was going to work on homonyms, which are words that sound the same but have different spellings and different meanings. Uh, but before we do that, does anyone have any um, any vocab in particular that they want to learn? Like any words that you've heard that you didn't know the meaning, or any specific vocabulary that you've been wanting to learn about that that we could focus on? Like, say you, you're really interested in, or you're going to travel next week and you want to learn about like airport vocab. Um, does anyone have anything specifically? No? No? All right. Well, if anything comes up, feel free to just shout it out at any point. Um, before we move on, it looks like we just have someone join us. Is it Yolanda? Hello? Oh, Yolanda, I don't know if your microphone is on. can't hear you. Do you want to make sure it's on on the on the screen? There should be a button in the upper right hand corner that has like a little bit a little microphone. And just make sure that's on. Um, is that working? Yeah. All right. Well, let's keep moving, and then you know if anything comes up. A lot of times, also we learn just from like. Say, little sayings coming up throughout the class. Um, so, like I said, we're going to work on, I was thinking of working on homonyms. Um, I actually have to look up how to spell it because I don't know. Homonyms. 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 Okay, so homonyms are just two or more words that sound the same, sound the same, um, but have different meanings and different uh, different spellings. Different spellings. Oh, Yolanda, it looks like you're working now. How are you doing? Maybe not. Mm. Okay, we'll keep going. Um, so, can anyone off the top of their head think of uh, homonyms? of like a group of homonyms or two words that you've heard that sound the same but have different meanings and different spellings? Anyone? No? No? Um, all right. Well, we'll work our way down alphabetically. Um, so one of them is the word aid. Does anyone know what the word aid means? Oh, sorry. Camera just moved. Aid, anyone? Is it the best of it? A what? Like an assistant? Uh, the the best of it. Oh, eight. Sorry, yeah, I I said aid, not with a d at the end, not eight, but but eight is the past of eat. So aid, the word aid has three different spellings actually: a i d, a d e, and a i d e. Okay. Sort of complicated. Um, we'll go through them really quick, or really slowly and clearly. Um, so the first oh, aid, no. spelled A I D, means to help someone or assist someone. Have you guys ever heard that used? Or have you, have you heard of it? Yeah? No? Okay, well, I'll use it in an example. Yeah. 
assist, Allison. Um, so aid as in to assist is a verb. So you could say I aided her in cleaning up the mess. I aided, aided her in cleaning up the mess. That just means I helped her clean up the mess. Or I will aid in the relief effort. I will aid in the relief effort. It just means I'll help out with the relief effort. Yeah. Does is that make sense? Used, is it used okay. as an, okay. as a noun too? Yeah. Um so they lend like they lend us aid. Just yeah, they give us help. Or they gave us it. aid in let's see what else. The medical the nurses gave us aid in the medical procedure. Nurses gave aid in the medical procedure. Um, sweet. Yeah. So aid can be the first type of aid. AID can is just can mean t to help or it can just mean help as a noun. Good question, Jesse. Uh, so what about the second uh, aid? Second just, just aid. More. Oh, go ahead. Yeah, no, no. go ahead. Yeah. No. No. How can we pronounce the the past tense of this verb? Aided. It's spelled like A I D E D. Um, and aided, yeah. So it's sort of tricky. It's hard to say quickly, but you you really have to open your mouth and stick those D's. So aided, aided, aided. Yeah. Makes sense more or less. Um. Okay. Cool. So then. Our next form of a was it a d e was our next one a d e yeah yeah so aid this is this type of aid is means juice it means juice um, so you'll hear it sometimes attached actually to to uh, fruit to mean the juice like has anyone he heard of lemonade means lemon juice. Lemon juice. It's a lemon juice. Or we also have limeade. Um, it just means a type of juice. And that's just a noun. Yeah. Makes sense. To prepare the place. With with the A D E Yolanda, it's not it doesn't it just means juice. That's our only meaning for eight. Um but but preparing could be used. Um, you could use that as a synonym for aid, like a i d, to help if you're helping to prepare something. But you would say I aided in the preparation of X Y Z. Um, okay, and then the final aid is a i d e, and that means an assistant, and that's just a noun. Um, but it means a specific person. It means a specific person rather than um, rather than a uh, an act of aid, an act to aid someone. So you know how we we used aid before as a noun as well, but this one means specifically like an assistant. So you could say the classroom aid gave snacks to the children. It just means like the the classroom helper gave snacks to the children, or you could say the aide helped us with our homework. Cool. Makes sense. Is that clear, more or less? So the the pronunciation is the same for them. Uh huh. Yeah. So that's the idea of the homonym. Why and why it's so difficult? Homonym. It's just a group. It just means there's a, a ton of homonyms, and we'll try to get through a couple more. Um, but it just means that they have the same pronunciation, but different meanings. Pronunciation, different meanings, different spellings. Different 
Alright, so is everyone clear more or less on, on AIDS? The different type of aid? Yeah? Clear for me. Good. Christian? Looks good. I'm hearing no shouting, you know, disgust or anger, so I'm going to keep on chugging. Keep on chugging. Um, let's see. Next, we could do, why don't we do a loud and a loud. Does anyone, no problem, Allison. Um, does anyone know the meaning of the word aloud? Or a meaning of one of the the pronunciations or, or one of the spellings of allow. Any clue? It's like, any idea? It's, it's like you are given permission to do something? Exactly. Um, and Leonardo also put up sort of the other definition, or part of the other definition. So we have two different allows. Allowed and allowed. I just typed them up. So the one with two L's, like the A-L-L-O-W-E-D, means to have permission to do something. To have permission to do something. Hello. 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 So for example, sorry Yolanda, I'm just getting a lot of background noise from you, so I'm going to mute it really quick. Um, so for example, what the word allowed is in to do something, you could say, we were allowed to swim in the pool until dinner time. Just means we were able to, we, we had permission to swim in the pool until dinner was ready. Does that make sense? Um, and then allowed, as in allowed like this, like Leonardo said in a high volume, means out loud. Out loud. So you could say, for example, the teacher read the book, read the book aloud to the class. She just, she read it out loud to the, to the children. Do those two definitions make sense? More or less? Yeah? All right, I know Leonardo's nodding, so Leonardo, can you give me an example of using the word aloud in a sentence but the word that means to have permission to, the first allowed. Can you think of a sentence that would incorporate that? Uh, let me think. In Brazil, uh, young people are, aren't allowed to drive. Yeah, exactly. That's good. The young, young people aren't allowed to drive. Great. Um, what about the other use of allowed? Can someone give me a sentence using allowed with the A-L-O-U-D? Thoughts? What about you, Christian? Can you think with of a sentence? With the allowed? second use of allowed. Yeah, the second one, though. I, I, I like to sing out loud. Okay. Yeah, you like to sing aloud. Exactly. Even though it doesn't sound very good. Uh, I'm sure it sounds fantastic. <laughs> Don't worry about it. <laughs> um, great. Well, that was good. Everyone, does that make sense, Yolanda and Jesse as well? Yeah, the sound is aloud. Exactly. We're all speaking. Right now, we're all speaking aloud. Okay. I think that it, it can be an adverb and an adjective, yeah? Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, Leonardo just asked the question on the chat, can you say I thought aloud? Um, yeah, and you could say that. That would be anytime you're thinking aloud is when you're you're saying what you're thinking, like as you're thinking it, you're thinking aloud. Or if you want to talk like you talk through a problem, you could say I'm thinking aloud. Exactly. Um, yeah, and so... We have one that's an adverb and one that is an adjective. Um, yeah, Yolanda, that's a good example as well. He's allowed to eat my cake. He has permission to eat my cake. Um, 
All right, so with that, I think you guys seem pretty clear on that. We can move on to another one. And this one, maybe, Christian, you can help me because the word is band, and Christian's actually in a band. Can anyone give me the definition of band a, or a definition of band other than a musical group? Does anyone know another another definition of the word band? And a band? What's that, Jesse? We have two uses, two different spellings of band with two different meanings. Can anyone think of the one? I think the most obvious is band, like a musical group. But can anyone think of the uh, the other use? I think you're Christian. I think you're thinking band aid, band aid, like the bandage, um, which is close. But yeah, band. No. Okay. So here are the two. Let me give you the two spellings. Band, like that's band, like the musical group group. And then this one's a little bit more tricky. Band, which is an adjective meaning not permitted. Permitted. So, for example, the second band, um, you could say, and that's just the adjective form of ban to ban. To ban. Um, which means to get rid of. Get rid of to out oops sorry uh, to outlaw um, so for example you could say our school band school band um, high heels so you could also say if you if you are dis disrespectful in the chat room you could be banned exactly that's a good example yeah if you are disrespectful in class, disrespectful in class, you will be banned. Um, just means you're not going to be able to be here. Or like with the school example, it means you can't wear high heels in class or to school. Does that make sense? What, what about this this word? Let me type it out. Okay, go for okay. it. Bend. Um, bending is a body, yeah, bend just means to move, like to move, bend, a lot of times we say bend over, or to, it means to, um, sort of mold something, to bend it, um, and that's a different, like that's to, just a separate word, but, um, it does sound a lot like band. So you do need to be careful, especially also in pronunciation, it's just a side note, like in pronunciation, you would you have to be very careful to um, to differentiate between band with a big like a sound eh band and bend with that eh sound a eh, band e bend and they're very similar um, but, but I think it's sort think of similar I don't know about, don't know Portuguese, about Portuguese but it's sort of similar to Spanish I would say um, in, in um, terms of pronunci pronouncing those two sounds. Um, yeah. And then we also have the word, just you know, bent, which is the adjective form of band. Or a bit of bend, I'm sorry. Bent is the adjective form of bend. So if something's bent, it means it's like molded or turned or shaped in some way. Cool. Hi, Ahmet. Okay. Sorry, right. just I know. How are you? I'm doing well. How are you? I'm good, thank you. Good. Uh, we're just talking right now about homonyms. Um, can anyone tell Ahmet what a homonym is? I know you guys know this. Uh, yes, uh, I may. Uh, homonym, uh, homonym is uh, some words that are similar in writing and in the pronunciation, but uh, they are different in the meaning. Okay. Can you type it? Great. Uh, good this. definition. Yeah, I'll type it up for you, Ahmed. That was a good definition. Thank you, Jesse. Um, 
It's two Amit, two or more words, words that sound the same out loud, sound the same, but have different spelling, different spellings, and different meanings. Meaning. So I'll let's do one. Let's do another example. How about the word bear? Does anyone have a definition of the word bear or know what a what bear means? Bear, uh, alcohol, and the animal. Bear. What was your first definition on it? Uh, an alcohol drink. Bear. Oh, beer. I think you're thinking beer. Oh, okay. Yeah. But the second definition was right. So we have two different bears. We have bear like this, which is the animal. Does everyone know what a bear is as in, as in an animal? Bear. Okay, let me find a picture. I don't know how much book have you learned in terms of animals. Um, I'm just going to find a picture really quick to put up. Um, so here's a picture. Of a bear. I to, to bear means uh, like carry something to? Mm -hmm. Like bearing a cross, for example? Yes, like bearing the cross. Yeah, so that's the other that's the other um, example. And that example is I believe is the same spelling. Um, to bear something means to, to hold it or to with it. Um, and a lot of times we have a lot of sayings with that use of bear, um, like to bear the brunt of something, or um, we a lot of times we say grin and bear it. Sorry, let me try. Grin and bear it just means to to gr like smile and deal with it, even if you're not happy. Um, but yeah, so that's that's another definition, and we have one more. Does anyone know the? And that's that that type of bear is the same spelling as bear, as in this the animal, just a carrier to support something. So we have here. Let me just type it up so we're clear. We have bear equals furry animal. Bear equals to support or hold up or hold up or um, deal with. And then we have one more, which is bear, spelled like this. Does anyone know what this spelling of bear means? Naked? Yes, exactly. Um, I think it was Leonardo. That type sort of bear equals naked. So you could say, she was bear-skinned which means she was wearing no clothing. Bare skin equals wearing no clothing. Or, for example, if someone is wearing a bathing suit, say you're wearing a bathing suit, I could say, okay, if Ahmed were wearing a bathing suit, I could say, um, his chest is bare. So, in that sense, you're using that bare as an adjective. I also you. can say um, barefoot. Yeah, exactly. Barefoot. That's a good one. Barefoot and barefoot is one word. Um, that's just when you're when you're not wearing any shoes. Exactly. That was good. Thank you, Christian. That was, that was helpful. Um, so can just so I, I we can review. Um, hi Bashar. Sorry, I also didn't welcome you in. Um. Can anyone give me an example that uses bear um, as in to and with the meaning to endure, that second bear that we have up there? It means just to like carry something or support or endure something. Any ideas? Uh, it could be Jesus Christ bear the cross. Mm-hmm. Jesus Christ exactly. So Christian's sample sentence was Jesus, bear, well that would be bore in terms of the past tense, but if you're using the present tense, you could say, Jesus has to bear the cross. Um, 
Does anyone have another example sentence? What about what about you, Leonardo? Or let me give one, and then and then I'll have you guys give one more. Um, exactly. I met. I can't bear you means I can't stand you. Stand you. Um, I can't deal with you. So I can't bear you. Um, or yeah, that's a. I don't. Let me try to think of another example sentence just to give you guys a third one. Um, we had to. Let's see. I could hardly bear the pain of the toothache. I could hardly, hardly bear the pain of my toothache. Almost unable to bear to deal with a toothache. Is that clear, more or less? I'm gonna go. With, I'm not hearing any big complaints. The baby's bear crying. Baby's bear. Cry, you wouldn't say that as much as you could say in terms of crying. Um, we had to bear. We had to bear the sound sounds of the babies crying on the plane. That means like we had to just deal with it. We had to endure the sound of the babies crying on the plane. Um, but you wouldn't use it. You really use it for yourself or for a person when they have to deal with someone else. So you don't really, you don't typically use it as a reflexive towards yourself. So you wouldn't say the baby's bear the crying as much as maybe the parents have to bear the crying of the babies. Because the babies are the ones that are doing the crying. Um, any other questions in terms of bear? No? Okay. Um, in that case, let's go to one more animal. We'll do one more animal slash other word hominid. What about the word B? We have two forms of B, B and B E. -E. Does anyone know what B would just B E means? B is animal? Yeah, that's but that's the double. That's the B E E. It's an insect. Yeah. Um so B E E is the insect. The black and white like buzzing around insect that stings you. What about BE? I think you guys are overthinking it because I know you know that word. Just BE. Any ideas? Yes, bees may make honey. B is to exist. It's a verb. Um, or to have a characteristic of. Characteristic. So, um, you probably don't recognize it as easily because we use different forms. So for I, you would say am. Instead of be, you would say I be, you say I am. But um, you could say I am hungry. That's the form of the word be. Um, and be is really I am, you are, he or she is, they are, we are. Um, so you rarely see that actually that form of be in the what we would call the infinitive form, um, but to be you you'll see it a lot like maybe on a T-shirt or on signs more where they have the infinitive to say to be happy or to be um, angry. Angry. Um, uses that, that other form of to be in the infinitive. Does everyone know the verb to be, the verb be? Yeah, yeah. be happy. Yeah, exactly. I don't think, I think you guys already know that, so I won't go into that really any further unless there's anyone that has a question. To be home, yeah. It's also, yeah, so the to be happy or to be angry are the or sort of examples of the definition of to be with characteristics. But then we also have to to exist. So you could say, like Leonardo gave the example to be home, 
um, that means that you're just you're in the house, you're at home. Um, or you could say like to be at uh, work. Just means you're at work. Um, you're in your in your place of work. To exist, lo location, as in your to exist in a place. Sorry, is <laughs> a weird way to say it. Um, does that make sense more or less to everyone? The different definitions of to be. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So we're actually almost done, but. I hope, like, I know we only got to go through a few, and we can totally continue this tomorrow if you guys want to do that. Um, but yeah, I think homonyms are pretty good. They're because they're kind of tricky um, because they are the same. They are the same pronunciation. It's just so you really have to focus on when you're reading the different spellings um, and also the context when you're hearing when you're listening to people saying these words. You really have to focus on the context that they're saying it in, which means like the words, the situation that they're using it in. Um, and I think it will be a little bit easier when you guys hear the context, and I think it was good that we gave a few sample sentences. So, for example, if you heard someone say, like, we had to bear the noise of the dogs barking all night, you'll know 